This is the Red Scarlet X Cinema Camera. It was announced in 2011 with a price tag of $10,000 to $17,000, but I bought this ready to shoot Scarlet kit for under $3,000, and in this video, we'll see if this 11 year old cinema camera is worth picking up in 2022, and we'll compare it to a more modern Blackmagic cinema camera to see how it holds up. This video is not sponsored, but it is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. Check the link in the description to learn more, and thank you so much for the support. As many of you know, I've had this camera for a little while, and I'm really excited to finally get to reviewing it. And if you enjoy these old cinema cameras, I have a whole playlist of these that you can check out, and I have many more planned for the future. But on to the Red Scarlet X. This was Red's fourth camera after two Red 1 models and the Red Epic, which I'm hoping to get my hands on at some point. The original Scarlet has a 14 megapixel Mysterium X sensor capable of 5K up to a useless 12 frames per second, 4K up to 30, 3K up to 48, and 2K up to 60 frames per second. And before we get to image quality, raw video, and what's so great about this camera, let's talk about the system and all the accessories that are required to get this thing up and running. There are several modules that make up the Scarlet system, and we're going to start by talking about the brain. The Scarlet brain is essentially the camera without a grip, lens mount, monitor, or battery. It is pretty much just a box with a sensor, some buttons, and connectors. On the back, you'll find some inputs and outputs, including HDMI, SDI, a headphone jack, and a power input. On the front, there are two mic inputs and a power and record button on the side. The first accessory you need to consider when turning the brain into a usable camera is the actual lens mount that goes on the front of the camera with four simple bolts. There were a couple options from RED, including PL, EF, and Nikon. And from third parties, there were several mount options available. For this Scarlet, I went with a simple no electronics EF mount that I found on Amazon for $250 on sale. If possible, I would recommend getting one of the EF adapters from RED. They have a positive locking ring and are really high quality. Next, we need to think about power. There are several options available to you, including a simple AC power adapter. You could also add a V-mount plate and D-tapped cable, or go with RED's proprietary RED Volt batteries. These can be used in a side grip that we'll talk about in a second, or the RED Pro battery modules. The battery modules come in dual and quad configurations and attach to the rear of the camera. While those modules look cool, these RED Volt batteries don't give you a lot of runtime, especially used, so I would recommend getting a simple V-mount solution to power the camera. Some will require 15 millimeter rods, and some, like the solution that I went with can be bolted directly to the back of the camera. Next, we need a way to control the camera and access the menu system. For this, you have three options, including a touch monitor that allows you to go into the menu system and make changes, the red mode, which attaches to the back of the camera, and our third option is what I went with, and that is the side grip which gives you a ton of buttons and allows you to access everything in the menu system and make changes to settings. It also has a little door that can be accessed for adding those Red Volt batteries if you wanna skip out on the V-mount. We're also gonna need some kind of camera monitor since there's nothing built onto the body. For this, I went with a simple HDMI display, in particular the OC4K, which is $125 and I've done a video on it, it's incredible. Or you could go with Red's proprietary monitors, but those are incredibly expensive for the actual display quality. So I prefer just to go with a simple monitor and use the grip to control the camera. That said, if you find a kit that has one of these monitors online, definitely go for it because it's really convenient having that touch control. Another critical accessory or module that is needed to use the camera is going to be the side media module. This bolts to the left side of the camera and allows you to take SSDs that are specific from RED and use them with the camera. Along with that side module, you will need red mags, and these are the larger 1.8 size magazines. They come in different sizes, and you'll also need a red station or reader so that you can take these and plug them into your computer over USB or Firewire 800. Finally, you might need some rigging gear to get the camera up and running. For example, a $20 top handle is going to make a big difference if you need to lift this out of the bag or get lower angled shots. Uh, things like a battery plate or 15 millimeter rods to hold a battery plate if you need it. Follow focus, monitor mounts, etc. All that stuff is optional, but some to consider if you're buying from scratch and building your own camera system. In total, my Scarlett 10 kit cost me just over $3,000, and that includes the battery, 
monitor and everything needed to shoot out of the box. I bought everything individually, but you can definitely find kits with pretty much everything you're going to need. And these days it's a lot more affordable to go that route usually. And I was able to find several Scarlet kits under $3,000. So expect to pay between 28 and $3,500, depending on how many modules and what modules are included. Once built, operation of the camera is surprisingly easy, especially when coming from the Red One, which I have also done a review on. The Scarlet setting can be accessed by pressing the menu button on the grip. From there, you can make quick changes to settings like your resolution, frame rate, white balance, and other settings by scrolling across the top of the screen. To access more, you can go into the menu system, which is loaded with settings. One thing I love about this grip on the side of the camera is that pretty much every button and dial you see can be programmed to do anything you want. And I really do mean any setting. You can have a button bring up a specific menu screen within the camera. You can also do things like have it do something when you press two buttons and hold them simultaneously, and even program what the shutter button does when you half press it before you fully hit record. All of that is fantastic, and I really appreciated that on the camera. The only issue I had specifically with the camera grip is that several of the buttons are very easy to accidentally press when operating the camera. Luckily, you can just turn these off completely in the menu. While it didn't bother me personally, I should mention that this is not a light camera. The brain alone weighs five pounds, so don't expect a DSLR style of handling. This puppy's heavy. Now let's get into image quality, and I'm going to be comparing this 2011 camera with a 2021 Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Obviously, these are two very different cameras. This is a behemoth, metal-bodied, crazy thing from RED. It's 10 years old. The Pocket 6K Pro has built-in NDs, is completely plastic pretty much, is much newer with way more video specs, also shoots RAW, like the RED camera does. And the 6K Pro is much more affordable at around $2,500 new. So very different cameras, but I thought it'd be interesting to compare kind of two different options, one old and one much newer. When it comes to low light, the Blackmagic completely stomps the RED with a much cleaner image, as you can see here at 3200 ISO. The Pocket 6K Pro has dual native ISO, so it's going to perform better at higher ISOs than the RED overall. Here's another test where I filmed myself with both cameras. I know this kind of thing starts to get subjective at this point, but when you look at these two images, something about the Pocket 6K just looks more video-y. I'm sure part of it is sharpness, but the more I shot with these two cameras, the more I was leaning toward picking up the RED. And I am not biased here, trust me, I purchased both of these cameras, but I almost always prefer to go with the RED, even though it has significantly fewer resolution options and frame rate options, I just prefer the image and there's something about this sensor and I felt the same way about a couple other cameras, the RED1 and the Sony F3, which is a fantastic cinema camera. There's just something different about different sensors and even though on paper another camera might have everything you want and more and cost less, there's still something to be said for a sensor that just looks good. On top of that, getting to the final image was so much easier on the RED, even with RAW on both of these cameras. On the RED, all I did was take the footage, slightly tweak the white balance, and add a very gentle curve to luminance. On the Pocket 6K, I had to do a lot more work to get the image and skin tones where I wanted them, and even then I could spend a lot more time tweaking the color on this camera, and that is huge. Not only do I like the look of the sensor on the RED Scarlet, but I also very much appreciate being able to very quickly get a great image. I barely touched it on the red. I know you can make anything look however you want when it comes to color grading, but I don't want to. I just want to be able to shoot and love the image right away, make a little tweak, and then walk away smiling. Whereas that's rarely the case when it comes to the 6K Pro in my opinion. Speaking of raw filming, you have several different compression options all the way up to 18 to 1, which is fantastic, and using the footage in Final Cut was a dream. Simply install RED's plugin, drop your footage in the timeline, go to the inspector where you will find all of your raw settings, and away you go. Something else I love about RED and raw cameras in general is you can choose from several different color profiles in post-production. You could switch over to RED Log and apply whatever LUTs you like to use, or just set the gamut 
reds and gamma to whatever red has available. Overall, this is my favorite workflow as it just looked fantastic. And usually all I would do is tweak white balance slightly and apply a very gentle curve adjustment. So where does that leave us with this camera? Well, it's $3,000, which in 2022 gets you pretty close to something like the A7S, or like we talked about, you could save even more money and get something like a Pocket 6K or 6K Pro. But I'm here to tell you after shooting with all those and more cameras, something about this guy just looks great and it makes me so happy to film with. Sure, it has major downsides. It is very heavy. It only shoots up to 4K 30s. You're not getting 4K 60. When you go down to 2K to get that 60 frames per second, the image is cropped in, not oversampled. The camera does get warm and sometimes loud when you're running for long periods of time in warm environments. And then we have the great Red Meg Sin. Unfortunately, you have got to use these with the camera. You cannot just go out and buy an affordable SSD and film, even though that's what's inside of this expensive little black drive. I've talked about this in my Red One review. You can check that out if you wanna learn more. But in short, I just really hope Red opens up this camera. They're getting older, just let us use SSDs and mount something else onto the camera so that we can keep using this amazing sensor and these great cameras without having to fuss with legacy media, which at this point is getting pretty long in the tooth. So at the end of the day, even though it might sound crazy to a lot of you, I'm going to be selling my 6K Pro and hanging on to this insane camera. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss future used cinema cameras. And keep in mind, I've already done several of these that you can check out in a playlist in the description, along with links to everything we talked about in this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video.